That was too loud, too early. <laughs> okay, um, so we're a little behind, but right on schedule, and gonna get started. <laughs> um, so yeah, first of all, just welcome everyone. Um, welcome to State of Our Networks. Um, I just wanted to start with a land acknowledgement. Um, we would like to acknowledge the sacred land on which our networks will take place. Toronto has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years. Um, the land is a territory of the Huron-Wendat, the Patoon First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was a subject of the Dish With One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and the Confederacy of the Ojibwe and Allied Nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, the meeting place of Toronto is still the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island, um, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work with, within a community on this territory. Um, so also, uh, and as you've seen in our uh, probably way too many emails, uh, we have a code of conduct uh, in order to foster an environment where we can all work together. So our networks is dedicated to providing a harassment-free environment for everyone, regardless of gender, gender identity and expression, sexual orientation, disability, physical appearance, body size, race, age, religion, or technical skill level. In order to reduce obstacles to participation, we have adopted an explicitly documented code of conduct to communicate our expectations at this event. So during the event, if you're being harassed, notice that someone else is being harassed or have any other concerns, we ask you to contact an organizer immediately. And so at this moment, I'm just gonna ask the organizers to stand up and wave, um, and we might make sure to do some better signage on our name tags throughout. So me, there's PacCon over there, uh, Gary and Shaq at registration, um, Ben is around, and Sarah. Um, also, if you would like to report an issue or a concern, but don't feel comfortable talking in person, you can email um, codeofconduct at rnetworks.ca. Uh, it's being actively monitored by me throughout the event. Um, so we have our full code of conduct available online. There are also paper copies at registration. Um, okay, so. Also, we have a live stream started this year. So Toronto Mesh, uh, uh, you can either over HTTP or peer-to-peer -peer, uh, hypermedia protocol, IPFS, stream um, the session. So Yurko is gonna talk more about how it came together and hopefully stays up um, <laughs> on Saturday, Sunday afternoon. Um, but also, we just wanted to let you all know that that means that this area is gonna be on a live stream. So if you'd like to stay uh, if you don't want to be on the stream, please stay out of it. The audio will also be um, from the room um, on the stream. Um, and so we encourage folks to take photos, but we request that you also seek explicit consent by asking permission before you do so. Um, so uh, if you look at the program, we have a full schedule both days. We have sessions that are ending. We're going to end session five minutes before the next one is scheduled to start. So apologies in advance if we do a little bit of like, uh, heavy uh, timekeeping facilitation, and we cut off any questions. Um, but also, because we have a full schedule, please remember to take breaks. So we're gonna have coffee uh, in the morning and afternoons, along with a lunch, but we're also within walking distance of a, walking distance of a lot of restaurants uh, and coffee. So please feel free to step outside and whenever you need some space. Um, there are sets of washrooms in the back, so on my left where I stand. Um, and then also we have a single use washroom um, accessible and if you want to use that, you can head to registration and uh, someone will show you where it is. Um, and so uh, our networks is more than just this weekend. We had a kickoff yesterday with a Yamaichi with our partners um, Bit Bazaar. After the weekend, we have three days set aside for project sprints, um, a little bit unconference and a little bit prolonged work time <laughs> for those of you who are able to stick around. Um, and we really tried to think about this event you know, being situated in a place. Toronto in summer is full of free festivals, park hangouts, bike rides, patios, sun late into the evening. Um, so there's a set of after parties of mostly free events. Um, then we're gonna pull together a list of them. It's available online right now via the program page, but we'll have a list also at the registration desk uh, for those who keep hanging out with us all the time. Um, <laughs> and you can also help us add more if you know of anything cool going on that people might be interested in here. So. Today would not be possible without our sponsors. And before some brief, brief remarks on this year's theme, I give a huge thank you to them, 
our partners, as well as our volunteers and my co-organizers. Um, first, Internet Society, Protocol Labs, and DAT Hub, so the DAP.org uh, DAP folks, are our tier one network sponsors for our networks. That is a lot of network. Um, <laughs> MakerDAO has sponsored the Kickoff Yamaichi we co-hosted yesterday with BitBazaar. Consensus provided tier three network sponsorship for our networks. Um, Sticker Mule, Quantum Coffee, Typher Bakery are providing in-kind swag and food. Yes. And then finally, but certainly not least, Mozilla Semaphore Research Cluster uh, at the University of Toronto and then Toronto Media Arts Centre helped us provide uh, these spaces. And so um, with the above this support, we were able to offer sliding scale registration, scholarships, food, coffee, and a way to plan this event with less overall stress. So our theme this year is Beyond DIY, Do It With Others. For many of us, to, to catalyze uh, in a moment what, was, what had been a slow creeping of unease, um, data extractivism, adding as model, political polarization, far-right populism, extreme weather linked to climate change, as well as forced displacement, all revealed fault lines in how our globalized communication infrastructures work, as well as the often too few parties mediating our interactions. Against this backdrop um, were setbacks to accessible, equitable, and resilient communication. And while there have been a growing number of peer-to-peer -peer inclusive and decentralized projects, in the face of pressure, we wondered what tools and tactics will help us recognize the opportunities and respond to the challenges of this moment. Um, you know, drawing from uh, the artist, online artist community further afield, um, as we were thinking about planning this conference, we kind of came to, to really hover around the question of what kinds of creative and critical engagement with technology practices can enable meaningful change when we're doing it with others. Oh shoot, I went a little too soon. So <laughs> our intent over the next five days is to hold space to collectively, um, I got a little a sound in there too. Uh, so our intent over the next five days is to hold space to collectively think, imagine, hope, and work together around this question. Thankfully, we're not alone, and this event is timely. In addition to projects actively building alternatives, a growing conversation is emerging around horizontal, peer-to-peer, -peer, and decentralized approaches, including you all in this room. Um, so maybe just to end, I'll offer a set of like questions that I've been carrying around with me and maybe I'll get them uh, carrying around with you, is why decentralization? Do we know why we're doing this? As a concept, it captures the imagination across a plurality of perspectives. So how do we nurture its liberatory potential? How does decentralizing connect with and work to support projects also taking up the promise of liberation in other areas of our communications infrastructure? Uh, I think about autonomy and self-determination around indigenous sovereignty and the recently held uh, uh, indigenous Connectivity Summit. I also think about forms of transnational solidarity with Global South and Global North projects. And then further and close to home, as we'll hear in our keynote, um, how we can work together for digital justice and equity. And so I think, uh, just to end, the title of our networks is, is almost purposely ambiguous. So R, who is included in R? And maybe historically, who has been marginalized or excluded? How do we make sure that they join the conversation? and networks. How can we play on this ambiguity in the word network, recognizing that it's not only technical, but also networks of relations of people in place? And so, I can't wait for the event to hear what you all have to say. And uh, with that, I'll just sort of get us ready with our uh, first session. So that is Wireless Toronto uh, with Gabe. So we'll just do a short turnaround now.